Aloha, everyone, and welcome to another show of Stay in Yana Hat. Uh, my name is Maria Mera. I'm your host. I'm also a financial advisor with Edward Jones. And um, one of the things that I was thinking that we really need to stay in young and high is creativity. And what a better way to just work on that creativity than marketing. And uh, I brought my guest today. His name is Curtis Pruder, and he's a market marketing specialist. He's been doing this for many years, and uh, he's here with us. So hi, Curtis. Thank you very much for joining us. Hey, Maria. Hey, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Oh, our pleasure. Uh, well, let's go into the into what is marketing. Tell me what is marketing and how long have you been doing it? Well, um, I've been doing marketing over 25 years. And uh, basically, sales and marketing, it's a company, you have a product or service, and you need to get people to know about it, and you need them to buy it. And so through sales and marketing, promoting what you do, that's all part of your business plan. So that, that's what I've specialized in. So that's what I do. And you are the owner of uh, Pruder Associates and the co-owner yes. of Fusion Hawaii, um, Fusion Marketing Hawaii, correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, so right. are, what is the difference between both companies? Well, uh, Pruder and Associates, I, I started that in um, 1995, and so I've been doing that a long time. And my, I specialized in um, marketing, consulting, and media buying, which is kind of old school. That's, you know, when companies need to buy newspaper, TV, radio, stuff like that. Uh, Fusion Marketing is just over five years old. I have a business partner, Steve Underwood, and what mm -hmm. we we primarily do is we do events at Pro Ridge Center and Kamakana Ali'i Shopping Center. So, it, so you, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sorry, yes. we and we are seeing we are seeing some pictures of your events and your <laughs> fairs. So, um, who who do you work with? Who who's your client here? Uh, basically, uh, you know, the the shows will have different themes. Like we had a home improvement uh, show recently. And we'll have like uh, Aloha Pacific FCU, Atlas Construction, My Key Closet uh, Solutions, uh, insurance companies like National Life Group. Um, mm -hmm. So, so everybody in the construction industry really for those. And then we do, so, and we do senior fairs also, and that's more uh, people that are have products or services that service seniors uh, in medical and things of this sort. So, okay. Yeah, so well, these these are the uh, small owners who are your clients more than yeah. they are. Okay. Yeah, it's, a, it's a mixture. Yeah, we you know we have some small business owners, but we have corporations too, and so it's a mixture. Okay, I think that we have some videos that will enlighten and we, we will give a more clear picture of what what we're talking about. Okay, so tell us a little bit that that was Kamakana Ali. Yes, that was our event that we had uh, in June, and it was like a fly video. I was uh, pretending I was a fly, and I just had my camera, and I walked down so you uh -huh. could see all the booths and all that. So, so that was, did, did did it have a topic, or uh, it was it uh, some some sort of um, a specific? Yeah, that um, was that was a home improvement fair. So we had the okay. home improvement guys out there. And uh, we just did a one-day event. We did a Saturday only. Some of the Pro Ridge events we do two days. So, so how was and we'll we'll get to talk a little more. But how was the uh, the the welcoming of uh, this event this year? Oh, it was really good. I mean, uh, the folks that live out by Kamakana, Oli'i, they're over by Kapolei and Ocean Point, out west on the island of Oahu. That mall was cooking. They have tons of, of foot traffic. They The selection of restaurants they have now is, I mean, it's one of the best on the island. So uh, we scouted all that before we did the event. We knew there were going to be people that are walking around. And uh, mm -hmm. we were real happy with the results we got from it. So, Okay, it really excellent. Let's, let's, uh, let's see the other one, the one on Feldridge. Okay. 
okay, we're going to have to, staying young at heart should be in the senior pair. <laughs> but maybe, maybe next year. So when, when was this one? Okay. Well, you probably could tell because people didn't have masks on that uh, this, yeah. was, uh, this was 2019. This was the end of 2019. Um, and that was a senior lifestyle fair we had at Pearl Ridge. Uh, so and, are, you, mm -hmm. are, you, are you going to hold that one this year as well? We or? are. Yes, we are. Okay. Yeah. So when, when is that? Um, that one's going to be uh, October 16th and 17th. It's a Saturday and Sunday. And, okay. you know, we're obviously we're following all the guidelines that the state and the malls, the properties have rules on what to do for COVID as well. So tell, tell us a little bit of those rules. How, Be, well, how is that different? I think it was it was responsible on their part. Uh, we basically are all masked up. So the exhibitors are all have masks on. And then we do the social distancing as well. And they've been good about that. So. You know, when you look at the footprint of our fairs, usually we have people much closer together. So we have yeah. less less exhibitors in the same space, but it's the right thing to do, I think. Yeah. Um, what about vaccinations? Are they requiring vaccinations or? Yeah, no, uh, there isn't any requirement to have a vaccination uh, to take part in the fairs or or to be, you know, to work with the with the mall to put on an event. So there's nothing mm -hmm. like that. Okay, so back to when when you were doing it in previous years, because probably now you don't have uh, that, those many numbers. But um, how, mm -hmm. how do you how do you follow the metrics? How do you know if it's successful or is uh, or not? Well, I mean, I think the main thing is that uh, these exhibitors they entrust us with getting them leads for their business, and mm -hmm. if we're not successful doing that then we don't get repeat business. So the main metric is the satisfaction of the exhibitors. And if, when they're satisfied, they keep coming back. And that's, we've been good at doing that. So basically you're trying to um, do the marketing for them, right? Not, not, only, yes. uh, not only with their own clients, but also with their prospects. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, so, some of the people that exhibit with us, we also, we, we do consulting with them too. Uh, as okay. the, you saw my business partner, Steve, he was, uh, he did the interview with uh, the TV station. Um, so we do have some clients. We do both those things, but a lot of the businesses, they just want an event. They want a good event. Okay. They can take part in, get their salespeople out there and get some leads, you know? So it's very, it's very clear this one time and, uh, and let's see how many leads we get. And that's how we measure this yes. success. That's basically yeah. it. I mean, because, yeah, 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 I, I was gonna say because um and correct me if I'm wrong, but for my time doing marketing as well, um consistency and and long term, uh, same as with finances, right? Is is one thing that pays pays off. Oh yeah. I mean you and I we, we both know uh, how important it is to be a good salesperson and and you know cultivate leads and you put it in the sales funnel and and then they become clients and you know that's yeah. the whole process if you do that well you're going to be successful and yeah yeah it's it's, it's a lot of uh, it doesn't it, it doesn't seem intuitive but um but marketing and and sales it requires a lot of discipline it, it, totally yeah i mean uh and it's difficult sometimes because you might you know be be have your mood where you're like oh things aren't going well and yeah. you got to be out there you got to be doing what you're doing you know got to keep yeah. looking for leads right so yeah <laughs> yeah so um how how do you see uh, the the business changing or do you do you see um the same moving forward well you know I, it, obviously i'm not that young a guy but um you know i've seen a lot of changes uh in marketing in general and a lot of it had to do with the media that people use you know because when, when you're a marketing consultant and you're going to use media to reach potential customers for a client, you got to figure out with, with media, who uses that media, who uses it and how do they use it? And the traditional media, a lot of the stuff that were the mainstays in the past are losing an audience. Okay. So, so the social medias, the pay-per-clicks, 
and under websites, all this are, it used to be okay, it'd be a good thing to do. Now it's essential. All the digital stuff mm -hmm. has to be on point. If you don't have the data on point, you're in trouble. It used to be you have a Yellow Pages ad and a newspaper ad and a landline phone and you're in business. Yeah. Not anymore. Yeah, not yeah. anymore. So Yeah, and the, and the pie, right? The budget for the companies is kind of the same. It's just the pie is more split before, as you said, it's just maybe the newspaper and the TV right. stations and the radio. And now it's Instagram right. and Facebook and uh, LinkedIn and yeah, right. so yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So um, it, within your business, do you work with all those um, strategies? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, we have to. We have to understand what the options are, and then the other thing is with the different companies. It depends on who their customers are. I mean, I have a I have a hearing aid company I consult for. And so, you know, you're looking at people that are, we're targeting people that are 55 and older. You can get away a little bit more with the traditional media. You're going to want to do that newspaper. You know, you probably want to have a little bit of a Yellow Pages ad still, even with Google. But yeah. I have other clients that they're targeting people much younger. I mean, they're under 50, for instance. And that's a whole different that's a whole different thing. I mean, if if you don't have your social media and and your website and the rest of the things correct, that you're not going to capture that younger audience. So yeah, but it 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 depends on who you, who your customers are on what yeah. you have to totally make sure you have correct. You know. So um, a question before we go to the break: Do you do you cover every sector or do you specialize in uh, the it? Do you like yeah. to specialize? Yeah, I have a I have a pretty diverse uh, portfolio, like of different different business categories. Um, I have a bankruptcy at attorney I'm consulting for, a hearing aid company. I have an estate attorney. Um, so, and then we have construction company. So, it we have varying uh, categories of businesses, which means we got to learn all those businesses. You know, we yeah. got to learn you know, who their customers are and what are they, you know, what's it like if you have a construction company, what's important to the customer, you know, what, what do they yeah. need to feel comfortable? That's different than say a bankruptcy attorney. So, so it is interesting, but it is a lot of homework, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a, it's a lot of work on your part and, uh, and extremely fascinating because you're learning from every single business out there, right? That you, you need to learn it. Um, oh yeah. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, let, let me uh, let me stop us here. Go to the break, and we'll be right back. We got this through there. I'm Mitch Ewan, host of Hawaii, the state of clean energy on Think Tech Hawaii. Hawaii, the state of clean energy is about following the many clean energy initiatives in Hawaii. Hawaii, the state of clean energy appears weekly on Think Tech Hawaii at 4 p.m. on Wednesdays. Thank you so much for watching our show. We'll see you then. Aloha. Welcome back to Stay in Yada Heart. Today we are talking to our marketing specialist, Curtis Pruder, owner of Pruder Associates and co-owner of uh, Fusion um, Marketing Hawaii. So, are you? Uh, we uh, uh, before we went to the uh, to the break, we were talking about all these sectors and all these businesses that you are working with. Um, are you are you focused on Hawaii, or are you working also in the mainland or anywhere else? Yeah, you know, um, uh, I'm focusing just on uh, clients in Hawaii. And basically, uh, my whole career, had, I've basically done that my whole career. I mean, I've had clients that they had multiple locations on the neighbor islands and stuff. But it, 
this is the market that um, you know I feel I understand. And you know, so when it, when when we are uh, sorry, I keep interrupting you, um, but. <laughs> No, my it's fine. Is that, is that, yeah, I, I never do that. <laughs> um, it's, it's like uh, my biggest flaw, but sorry. Um, when when we are talking about Hawaii, are we talking about all the islands, as you were saying, or just Oahu? Yeah, the, all the islands. And, you know, mm -hmm. uh, there there were some the companies I did in the past where they had multiple locations, right? And so they needed a comprehensive marketing plan. And actually, the neighbor islands are a little bit different, too, you know. Uh, as far as the way you want to promote products and stuff, which is kind of interesting. Yeah. In which in which way? Uh, give us an example. Well, I think um, you know basically, um, like uh, when I think of like Kauai, for instance, Kauai is beautiful. The people are super nice. The community is really strong there, and I was doing some consulting work uh, with the credit union. And the way that they worked with their customers was really like they were, you know, how you always hear, you know, like family, you hear that yeah. in the ads over here. They actually did that. They'd have a big party for the, the people that were customers of the bank and they'd be giving stuff away. Very, it was nice. It was really fun to take part in that. But, yeah. but that, you know, that was the way they did it on Kauai. I think we should all do it that way, but. But um, you know, <laughs> no, no, not these days. Customer service is <laughs> right, it's, right, it's a little right. Different these days. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, a lot of it. You know, uh, I've been in Hawaii a long time, but I'm working with the business people that work in Kauai, and they go, "Hey, look, you know, we ought to do this and this, and this would work well with the customers." And yeah. it's a back and forth thing, you know. It's uh, and uh, again, I'm I'm coming from Spain, right? But then from the mainland, I live in. Um, in in Ohio, in San Diego, in San Francisco, right. um, the way things are done in Hawaii are so um, so so different, and either you adjust or because no one <laughs> is going to adjust to what you to what yeah. you're bringing. Uh, where where are you originally from? Um, I'm originally I'm from Delaware. I'm on the East Coast, and uh, uh -huh. you know, so it's. If he went east from Washington, D.C., you would have run into my hometown. I grew up at the beach uh, on the Atlantic Ocean. And, yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So East Coast is very different from Hawaii. Yes. Very much. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what brought you what brought you to Hawaii? Uh, when I got out, I went to University of Delaware. I was a communication major and. Uh, my first goal, I wanted to be a professional broadcaster. So I was doing radio. And so I got my first job on the East Coast. I worked in Atlantic City, uh, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And um, my career was not going great. Um, and so my parents live in Hawaii. And so I came out to see them. And I actually got a job at KQMQ. I was just like a part-time guy. Uh, but that was the old timers will remember, like when Willie Moku and Michael Kusang and those guys were big. Huh. and. So I was over there. I worked at KQMQ and I was filling in for people. And then I said, hey, how about sales? Would you teach me how to be a salesman? And so they did. Then they said, look, you got to choose. You can't be a salesman and on air. And, they, mm -hmm. and I, I, was, I knew my radio career wasn't going to go anywhere. So I was like, I'll do sales. So, so they taught me how to sell. And I went to KGU what? a couple of years later and they that's when um KGU AM 760 used to have UH Sports. So I was selling advertising for the radio broadcast of UH Sports. And I did that. Then I started my ad agency after that. But but yeah, it's been fun. Yeah. So do you do you have any do you have any um do you work on the content uh for for the ad? Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean it, the, throughout the whole process uh, when I was a disc jockey, you would be doing, you'd be creating the ads with the salespeople and some stations would have copywriters that would help write the ads up. So I was on the, actually the creative side of the business. And then when I became a salesman, I, I still had knowledge of how to do the creative stuff from what I had been doing before. So, yeah. Yeah. 
It yeah, seems it's... like you had the perfect, you you are the combination of the perfect, everything that requires, <laughs> that is required from your job, yeah. right? Like you, you well, are a small business owner, uh, you work on content, communication, right. um, marketing. I mean, it's like right. the perfect combination. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's just, it was weird. I, you know, I thought what I wanted to do was get into management. I actually thought I wanted to be a manager at one of the radio stations. But um, when I got into sales, I loved it so much. There's, there is freedom with it. You got to work hard and it's, oh. can be, um, it can be emotionally difficult at times, but I really loved it. it there's freedom in it. And, mm -hmm. and I never wanted to be in management after that. So that's why I started my own ad agency because I didn't, I wasn't looking to go up the ladder in radio after that. Yeah. So, do you have any weakness for any of the um, of the tools that you have? Do you do you go more for radio? Yes, because you work there or newspapers. Oh yeah, yeah. Just... yeah I think mm -hmm. you know, radio is probably my strength. I have clients that do quite a bit of that um, because it's my background. I have people I work with. Uh, my business partner in Fusion, Steve, is a he's a graphic artist. He's the guy that did the Down to Earth logo. I don't know if you've seen that. Oh. Of he's course, like a, yes. <laughs> he, he's, like, he's like a master artist. And so, you know, I partner up with people when uh, for what I'm weak at. And uh, Steve, Steve's amazing. So I'm real happy to be working with him at Fusion. Oh. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll have to have him sometime also. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's, a, he's an interesting guy. Absolutely. I, <laughs> definitely. We like interesting people here. That's why you're here and I'm here. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so um, I was going to ask you, um, so um, who are your competitors here in the island? Well, you know, it's interesting because it used to be, um, you know, not that long ago, maybe maybe 15 years ago, there were just tons of ad agencies in town. And you had some that were handling huge accounts like um, uh, like Aloha Airlines and guys like that you know like local, huge dudes yeah but local, big, big huge budgets big, big and stuff. Mm -hmm. um when we went through i think it was like 2005 or something this was a while ago there was uh we had a recessionary period and that kind of thinned the herd some of the some of the companies went under so on and so forth the social media became like the big deal okay and the public relation firms grew during that time because Social media was is a cousin of, of public relations, you know, and public mm -hmm. relations would be instead of running ads. Right. You're trying to get news coverage. Right. So yeah. so that that leaned out the market. And so there are I have competitors today, but I have I feel like I have a lot less locally than I used to because people got out of it. Um, yeah, because the. It had to do with social media, companies doing their own stuff, and then the PR firms were doing it. But the advertising part, which used to be traditional, became a lot less a uh, piece of what was going on. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, I mean, that's that's my kind of arbitrary look at it, you know? That's yeah. kind of how it looks to me. So uh, let's say I'm coming new to Hawaii and I have a small business. Um, right. Do, do you have a process that you would recommend to go through or uh, like an SOP? Yes. Or, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think basically, you know, the first thing is like with your business and it's tough. Hawaii is very difficult because mm -hmm. a small business here, when you take a look at the expenses of a small business, it's not like in most places. Usually where you're at, where, you know, your office space and that that's changing too with COVID, right? less people are going to be using office space, but, yeah. but the, there are a lot of things, employment costs and how much it costs to rent and all the rest of it. The, the advertising budget gets squeezed over here, I think more than, than maybe some other markets. And so the business owners have to be disciplined in, you know, what they're going to spend. They got to set aside some money that they're going to use to get business in the door. Okay. I mean, yeah. it's easy not to do it because you got to pay the rent, you got to pay this, and you got to do payroll, and you do, but you need to be disciplined enough to set money aside. And then the other yeah. thing is, with the plan, is like, you don't want to pay for people 
uh, the, the people laugh when I tell, tell them this usually. We want to find out who your potential customers are. We don't want to spend any money on people. There's like no chance they're going to be your customer. Just r- cross them out, you know? And, yeah. And so if it's a certain age group or whatever, you just say, okay, we're going to, you need to be very smart about who you're targeting as your customer. And the better you are at doing that, the more efficiently that money you set aside is going to return an investment. If you try to reach everybody all the time, you're going to go broke. I mean, you got to be smart about it, right? It's my, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's the main main thing. Okay. Any um, other words of wisdom that you want to share with us today before we, uh, before we say goodbye? I don't know if it's words of wisdom, but I, I, you know, any, any of the, small business people or even the bigger businesses out there, congratulations on it. Looks like we're getting through COVID. And I mean, I just, I have never seen anything like that. Um, You know, pat yourself on the back because, you know, that was, I've been in business over 25 years and that was a real challenge last year, really a challenge. So congratulate yourself for that. And I think better days are ahead for all of us. You know, I really do. Those are awesome words, uh, very positive, and uh, I completely, I cannot agree with you more. Um, yeah, sometimes hanging in there is good enough, right? It so is, you hang yeah. in there, uh, good job, yeah. Yeah, um, that's an A+. plus. If you, you made it through last year, you get an A+. plus. That's what I think. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, Curtis. Thank you Thank for you. Uh, always being uh, so professional, so um, on top of things. And uh, for me, at least, that I've worked with you, I, uh, I, I definitely only have good words and uh, good experiences. So um, same from me. Same from me. Yeah. <laughs> let's let's bring you let's bring you and Steve some other time and um but not your dog we won't bring your dog next time. <laughs> yeah, you heard our dog. Yeah, it's my dog. I'll talk to my dog after this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. And we'll talk. We'll talk so soon, Curtis. And thank you, everyone. We'll see you next Tuesday uh, on another episode of Spain Yagan Hat. <laughs>